Hey guys, it's DJ with the Detailing Business Channel back for another Dirty Car Detail. Well, what do you think of this weather? Like most of the country, we've been hammered with back-to-back -back winter storms. And of all times, the owner of this 2020 Silverado is adamant about getting the road salt off of his truck. And it has to be done today. I mean, can you believe this guy wants his truck detailed in the middle of a winter storm? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you what's so special about this truck, who owns it, and why it's got to be detailed today. I'm also going to go through step by step of how we're going to get this truck back in shape and protected for the rest of the winter. Real quick, if you're new to the channel, new videos are posted every Monday at 5. Everything from dirty car details to tips and tricks to running a detailing business. So make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. So our question I get a lot in the winter time is what do you do in the winter and how do you stay busy? Well there's many different ways to detail a vehicle in the winter time. But no matter what tools or products you have, you'd have to be crazy to detail a car outside on a day like today. Well, I'm not crazy, so let's get this truck in that heated garage behind you before I freeze to death. <laughs> All right, that's better. So operating a detailing business in the winter time can be a real challenge. Your water can freeze, your products can freeze, and not only that, business is slow in the winter time. For me, it's definitely slower in the winter time, but on occasion I get the opportunity to where I work in a nice heated garage. Exterior detailing can be a real challenge in the winter time because of road salt. Waterless and rinseless washing is great in the winter time, but to really remove road salt, you need a traditional wash or you'll be fighting salt the whole time. So if it's possible, you can limit your exterior detailing in the winter time and focus more on your interior detailing. Me personally, I'm very selective on the jobs I take on in the winter time. Being in business for nearly 20 years, I've built a customer base that keeps me profitable and busy from spring to fall. And I can take a break in the winter time and work on the business, work on videos, do my taxes, or detail big dirty pickup trucks, things like that. So who's the owner of this truck and why is he so adamant about getting it detailed in the winter time? Well the owner of the truck is me. This is my truck and it kills me to know that it's sitting in the garage being ate alive by road salt. This truck's primarily used to pull a fifth wheel camper and I'd like to keep it in great shape for years to come into my retirement. If you remember in the last video I mentioned I'd answer some questions in the comments about what's the best wax and how to make more money in my detailing business. I'm going to answer those questions along the way, but first let's get this truck washed up so we can move on to the next step.
not a huge fan of the foam cannon. It puts off a lot of suds and is cool in videos. But in my experience, a customer has a conniption fit when they see soap everywhere. So I pretty much stick to waterless and rinseless washing in most cases. But all bets are off in the winter time when it comes to road salt. You really need a pressure washer and a foam cannon helps to break down all that road salt. If you're interested in waterless and rinseless, check out my awesome video in the description where I show you how to wash clay and dry in one simple step. In this situation today, the foam cannon is the right tool for the job because of the road salt. I know what you're thinking. Why would he be spraying wheel brightener on the paint? Well, in my experience, it does the same thing as the iron decon, but it doesn't stink. Iron decon stinks and it leaves stains on uh, concrete. Pretty much does the same thing. I don't know if you can see, there's a little spot right there. There's several spots. They're gold flakes. That's brake dust, and that's what I'm trying to remove with the wheel brightener. Ta-da!
All right, now that the truck's all washed, it's time to move on to the next step, but we need to determine what that next step is. So the first thing I do is feel the paint, see if it has any bonded contaminants on it. It is wet, so I'll dry it off in a spot, then I'll feel. If it's rough, it's probably time for a clay bar. One question I got in the comments was, how can I be more efficient in my detailing business? Well, one way of being efficient is not to be redundant. The keyboard detailers would tell you to dry the vehicle right now, but that would be redundant. Why not just go into the next step? The next step being the clay bar treatment. Clay bar lube, quick detailer, last touch from Meguiar's, it's mostly water. It would be more efficient to use it right now while the vehicle's wet. Time to dry. Now that the paint is smooth and dry, I like to inspect the paint for light scratches and swirl marks. If there are any scratches or swirl marks, then it might be wise to head down the path of compounding or polishing, or maybe even an all-in-one polish, which is like a cleaner wax. A cleaner wax is a quick and easy way to remove light scratches and swirl marks and wax at the same time. We're gonna head down a different path on this vehicle, but I'm gonna check if it needs polished first. Doesn't look too bad, maybe a light polish and that's about it. Let's answer those questions. The first question is, what's the best wax? I get that question a lot and it's a deep rabbit hole to go down. It's kind of like asking what's the best restaurant? Professional versus consumer waxes, traditional carnauba versus hybrid or synthetic wax. To sum it up real quick, there's little differences between professional and consumer waxes. The biggest difference is quantity of product. I go through a lot of wax and I always use Meguiar professional line because it's cost effective and I get it in bulk. There are major differences between traditional carnauba waxes and hybrid and synthetic waxes. Hybrid and synthetic wax is more like a paint sealant. It bonds to the surface and it lasts for months, typically six months. Carnauba wax is great. It gives you that deep rich finish but it only lasts a month or so and you have to keep applying it every month. I always recommend to my DIY customers more along the lines of a synthetic wax. In my opinion, the best consumer wax out right now is Meguiar's Ultimate Wax. It comes in a liquid or it comes in a paste. It's a whole kit. It comes with uh, the wax, the applicator, and the towel. You can pretty much find these anywhere, but there is product links in the description. The next question is, how can I make more money in my detailing business? If you're an owner operator like me, you realize that uh, you can tap out on income. The only way to increase your income is to be more efficient so you can take on more work 
Hire help, good luck with that. Raise your prices or work longer hours. Another option is to upsell services. I only upsell services that adds value for the customer. Headlight restoration is an easy upsell for a customer that needs it. Engine detailing is another one. Fabric protection is a good one. One quick and easy upsell that's very valuable for the customer is a product called Optimum OptiSeal. This is a true paint sealant. I charge $50 to upgrade to this paint sealant. It doesn't add any time to the job. It's very valuable to the customer and it's super easy. All you have to do is apply it and walk away. It gives a high gloss and it'll be beading water for six months. This is also available in the description. Tune in next Monday at five and we'll pick up where we left off on this truck. I'm gonna be polishing it out, prepping it for a coating and finishing up the interior. If you're subscribed and you click the notification bell, you'll get notified when that video posts. I'll see you next Monday on the Detailing Business Channel.